Darren Marlar Radio Show Audio Rewind. A Mississippi man is dead, but once you hear the story of how that happened, you're going to have to agree with me that it is a totally outrageous story. I'll have that story for you coming up in a few minutes. Hey, you want to be a part of the show? Well, if you want to visit the radio show page at DarrenMarlar.com, you can send me an email for the email bag. DarrenMarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. And then click on Radio Show. So you want to jumpstart your imagination. I think we'd all probably like to be able to do that anytime. Well, here's an idea. Wear something green. Scientists found that the color of leaves, grass, and, well, the light go for the traffic lights, that sparks creativity. They're even calling this the green effect. Researchers they tested the power of colors by showing a group of test subjects a white rectangle and then another group a green rectangle before giving them a creative task. And the green subjects they ended up with more imaginative and innovative results. Green also proved superior when pitted against red, blue, and gray. Uh, green may serve as a cue that evokes the motivation to strive for improvement and task mastery, which in turn may facilitate growth," concludes study head Dr. Stephanie Lichtenfield, assistant professor of psychology at Ludwig Maximilians University in Munich, Germany. Uh, still, she cautions against going wild and painting your house green and buying a green wardrobe because, well, the influence of the color is just subtle. Uh, she also noted that the most powerful green effect it was produced by the shade of the color seen on pine trees. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. Smoking is dumb. Lighting your cigarette in an unconventional way. That could be a moment of duh. That story is uh, coming up right around the corner. I'm Darren Marlar, and a Mississippi man is dead. But once you hear the story of how this happened, you'll have to agree with me. This is totally outrageous. What time is it, boys and girls? Totally outrageous! Totally outrageous. Down in South Haven, Mississippi, lives 41-year-old Ishmael Lopez. Now, he's never been in trouble with the law. Uh, he's an American citizen. He's not wanted for anything. Nevertheless, he's now dead because he was shot by a police officer attempting to serve an arrest warrant at the wrong house. According to the Washington Post, Lobez was in bed when he heard a sound outside his home. He got up to see what was going on. Moments later, he was dead. Prosecutor John Champion claims that Lopez was pointing a gun at the two police officers outside his house through a partially open door and ignored orders to put the gun down. Champion says it appears one officer shot at a pit bull that ran out of Lopez's home and then the other shot at Lopez himself. Uh, there were three bullet holes in Lopez's front door. Now It's unclear if Lopez fired any shots himself or if he even knew that the people at his door were police officers. Attorney Murray Wells says neither Lopez's wife nor a neighbor heard the officers tell Lopez to drop the gun. In fact, he says Lopez wasn't even holding a gun during the shooting. Wells says there was a gun on the couch at the time, though. Police were attempting to serve an arrest warrant for Samuel Pierman, who lives next door to Lopez. Wells says that the two homes are 36 feet apart. They both have their addresses clearly visible. An investigation into this shooting is underway. He is young and intelligent and highly trained. He is Eric Banfeld, shipwrecked on a long-forgotten colony world where brawn and brute strength are more valued than knowledge. Physically untrained and emotionally unprepared in the barest skills of survival, he seems compelled to spend a short, and very unpleasant life as a half-naked savage worked like a beast of burden on a world so sunk into barbarism that its inhabitants have no concept of the wheel. It's either that or die. His only possible chance, his only hope of becoming one with the folk is to become a singer or teller of true stories. But in Eric Banfeld's case, he will be a singer of lies. 
Singer of Lies, a science fantasy novel by Michael R. Collings. Hear a free sample on the audiobooks page at MarlarHouse.com. And now another useless fact. An interesting trend among campgrounds across the country, lots of them are now offering free high-speed wireless internet. Because, let's face it, who wants to go out camping and get away from it all if you can't brag about it and upload photos to Instagram? Time for today's moment of duh, and you know, they say cigarette smoking is hazardous to your health. Well, Ohama's, uh, Omaha's that is, uh, Tim Green found out, found that out the hard way. Uh, however, cancer is the least of Tim's worries. He tried to light a cigarette using a propane torch. He ended up starting a fire in his detached garage, which left him hospitalized in critical condition with third-degree burns. Duh. You'll be coughing in your coffin if you smoke. You'll be coughing in your coffin if you smoke. You'll be coughing in your coffin, wheezing pretty often. You'll be coughing in your coffin if you smoke. And that's all the words to this song that I wrote. If you yawn and your dog yawns at the same time, what does that mean? Well, we'll find out shortly. I'm Darren Marlar. If you'd like to keep up with everything I do, you can sign up for my newsletter. It's the Marlar Sheet, and it's free. You can sign up for it at DarrenMarlar.com. D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Well, if you are fat and in your 40s, you better look out. Uh, by the way, I'm talking to myself on this one as well. Uh, people who are obese in middle age, they're more likely to experience a more rapid mental decline, including memory loss, than their friends who are of normal weight. That's the word from French researchers at the Center for Research in, in, in uh, Epidemiology and Population Health at INSERM in Paris. Now, those who are obese and also have high blood pressure and other problems linked to heart disease and type 2 diabetes, well, they have the highest risk for mental decline. But even those who are quote-unquote fat and fit, well, they will experience a faster loss of mental abilities too. So I uh, am doomed. <laughs> Marlar Radio Show Audio Rewind. Drunk driving. It can now be blamed on high heels. That story coming up. First, though, it's today's question impossible. Here's your question. Approximately how many pounds of food will you eat in your lifetime? Again, how many pounds of food will you eat in your lifetime? I'll have the answer for you later on in the show. I'm Darren Marlar, and when you yawn, and that causes your dog to yawn, well, that means you've got a pretty smart pooch there. Uh, some dogs, they find human yawns contagious, and that suggests that there are rudimentary capacities there for empathy, something scientists thought that only humans and a few chimpanzees had. 72% of the 29 dogs that were tested by British researchers, uh, they were so sensitive to human yawns that seeing one made them yawn in response. On the other hand, if your dog yawns and that makes you yawn, then you're just weird. Unless you're listening to my show, at which point yawning is probably expected. Dangerous and disturbed. The Darren Marlar Radio Show. I'm listening. Christy Brinkley. She says, it's hard to meet nice guys at the age of 63. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm finding that kind of hard to believe because, well, she's Christy Brinkley. Uh, I mean, men from the age of 20 to 120 want to date her. She's Christy Brinkley for crying out loud. Hey, uh, I'm Darren Marlar, and uh, it's time for today's Brain on Drug story. And uh, each day, you know, I'm talking about dumb things that people do under the influence. But addiction, that's no laughing matter. If you or somebody you know does need help, there is a toll-free number that you can call. It's 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline. 1-800-438-0380. And today's Brain on Drugs, drunk driving can now be blamed on high heels. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> Attorney Bill Thomas of Durham, North Carolina, has created a new defense for women accused of DUI, the high heel excuse. 
Thomas argued that the sobriety test was unfair because it required his client to walk a long, straight line, pivot quickly, and then stand on one foot for 30 seconds, all of which is impossible because she was wearing stilettos with three-and-a-half-inch heels which make women wiggle. He claimed that under the circumstances she did remarkably well by balancing on one foot for 16 seconds. The judge agreed, invalidating the test, and he tossed out the case. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, this story is potentially terrifying. An artificial intelligence system being developed at Facebook, it has created its own language. It developed a system of code words to make communication more efficient. Well, that scared the researchers too, so they shut the system down when they realized that the AI it was no longer using English. The observations made at Facebook they're the latest in a long line of similar cases. In each instance, an AI being monitored by humans has diverged from its training in English to develop its own language. The resulting fra uh, phrases they appear to be nonsensical gibberish to us humans, but they contain semantic meaning when interpreted by AI agents. Scary stuff. Uh, if you want to read the entire article on that, I, I did post it to my blog yesterday, so you can still find it. I was just I was floored when I saw the story. Uh, you can find my blog though and read the story at darrenmarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Just click on my blog once you get there. Well, a dozen years ago, a guy from England, he had a brilliant plan for making money on the internet. He would create a website made up of a million pixels and arrange them in a 1,000 by 1,000 grid, and then he sold 10 by 10 blocks for a dollar. You might remember that. It was a long time ago. But people today, even in 2017, people are still finding creative ways to make a quick buck online. Here's the latest. I can't believe this is actually a real thing, but it is. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. The, the website how many people paid a dollar to see how many people paid a dollar dot com <laughs> that's that's the real site how many people paid a dollar to see how many people paid a dollar dot com uh, the owner of this site he makes money by selling you for just a dollar the right to see how many people have paid a dollar to see how many people have done the th same thing that you just did I have to admit I did uh, check out the website and you know just out of curiosity. It was really tempting to spend just to spend that dollar, but I held back. I, uh, I I didn't do it, but boy, was I tempted. Today's question impossible answer for you. Well, first the question again: Approximately how many pounds of food will you eat in your lifetime? The answer: Well, during your lifetime, you'll eat about sixty thousand pounds of food. That's the weight of about six elephants. I'm Darren Marlar. Here's a, a dirty little secret about mind-numbing, boring tasks that we do at work. We won't, we won't admit it, but we actually love those. Completing unchallenging tasks it gives us such a sense of accomplishment that this kind of work actually makes us happy, according to researchers from the University of California, Irvine, and Microsoft Research. With rote work, you get a feeling of accomplishment, but you've not really exerted a lot of mental activity," says study leader Gloria Mark. She told the Wall Street Journal this, and it gives you a feeling of fulfillment, but there's no frustration or stress. So we like doing those mind-numbing things, which is probably why I feel so good every day after the show. This is getting boring. The Darren Marlar Radio Show. He should go make people laugh in heaven. Get your thoughts heard. Send Darren a message through Facebook, Twitter, or his website at DarrenMarlar.com. The Darren Marlar Radio Show. Hi, I'm Darren Marlar, and if you've missed any part of today's show, well, you can catch up at DarrenMarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Well, when your dog does her series of three tricks, you know, rolls over, shakes, speaks, and she does it all in perfect succession, just like you trained her to do, well, do you think she'd rather have a doggy treat or some praise from you? Well, given the choice, many dogs actually prefer praise over food, according to researchers from Emory University in Atlanta. 
Dogs were at the center of the most famous experiments of classical conditioning conducted by Ivan Pavlov in the early 1900s. You've probably heard of Pavlov's dogs. Well, Pavlov showed that if dogs are trained to associate a particular stimulus with food, that the animals salivate in the mere presence of that stimulus in anticipation of the food. Well, one theory about dogs is that they are primarily Pavlonian machines. They just want food and their owners are simply the means to get it, according to lead study author and neuroscientist Gregory Burns. Another more current view of their behavior, though, is that dogs value human contact in and of itself. A study found that most preferred praise from their owners over the food, or at least they appeared to like both equally. Only two of the dogs were real chow hounds, sharing a strong preference for the food. Ladies and gentlemen, the Darren Marlar Radio Show. Come on. This is important. The most significant event on the internet today. Who, may I ask, are you? Darren Marlar. Hey, I'm Darren Marlar, and uh, if you like scary stories, well, I have a, a show that I post up online. Uh, it's called Weird Darkness. If you like paranormal and ghost stories and un unsolved mysteries, that kind of thing, you might like it. It's at WeirdDarkness.com. Well, researchers at the University of Utah, they have noted that humor is one of the best ways to bring a fighting couple back together again. Laughter it does two, th it does two key things. It breaks the tension, and it's a reminder that you two do have some common ground, since you're both chuckling over the same thing. Laughter a throwdown, text him a link to a goofy YouTube clip with a message like, this made me feel better, hope it does the same for you. In fact, I found a great video that you that you could actually send to your uh, significant other if you're if you're fighting. Um, this is great because it's actually a video about what we all argue about in our marriages. Stupid stuff that we argue about. I posted the the uh, the uh, video in my blog if you want to check it out at darrenmarler.com. Let's do it, y'all. It's about time. The Darren Marler Radio Show. I'm listening. I need a little excitement. Get more Marler on Facebook. Two guys wanting to celebrate Independence Day? Well, they end up celebrating a moment of duh instead coming up. I'm Darren Marler. You can hear the show anytime at DarrenMarler.com. You know, even when healthy, some people religiously head to the doctor every year for a physical exam, which is often covered by health insurance. But a review from Danish researchers it concludes that there is very little benefit to such routine exams on healthy people. The researchers analyzed information from 183,000 people who took part in 14 trials carried out in Europe and the United States, and in all the trials, participants were randomly assigned to either receive a routine health check involving screening tests, a physical exam, or advice about lifestyle changes, or not receive one. And results showed that patients who received routine health checks they were just as likely to die over a nine-year period compared with those who did not receive health checks. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Regardless of what I do, I'm likely to die in the next nine years? How come nobody's reporting that? Stop it, you're scaring me. Darren Marlar. You're a very odd man. What does that mean? Want more? The Darren Marlar Radio Show. A new app called the Kissinger is a rubber gadget that attaches to a user's phone to simulate long-distance kissing. With your lover smooching you from another location, the Kissinger mimics a real kiss using pressure sensors and actuators. So now you can actually tell somebody to kiss my grits from across the country and still mean it literally. Nobody ever kissed me the way you do. Two guys wanting to celebrate Independence Day, they end up celebrating a moment of duh instead. I'm Darren Marlar. You know, Independence Day, it, it, it's obviously over, but the stories of true in duh visualism involving fireworks, well, those stories are far from over. From Chicago, Illinois, comes today's Moment of Duh with James Kowalski and Josh Feynman wanting to celebrate the 4th of July. Well, these two guys, they, they weren't willing to pay the high prices for fireworks, though, so they decided to make some of their own. They filled 10 small balloons with explosive acetylene gas and then planned to ignite them at a party later in the day. Loading up their car to head to the party, they threw the balloons in the back and then slammed the door. Well, a spark ignited the balloons, blowing up the car and throwing James and Josh several feet. 
Fortunately, they suffered only minor cuts and burns. They can't say the same, though, for the car. Duh. Darren Marlar. This is my house. My house. The Darren Marlar Radio Show. Every day that you breathe, you make my life harder. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is the Darren Marlar Radio Show Audio Rewind. I'm Darren Marlar. If you'd like to be a part of the show, well, why don't you drop me an email? You can do that by visiting DarrenMarlar.com and then click on the radio show page to find my email address. That's DarrenMarlar.com, D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com, and then click on the radio show page. Well, you can blame it on your mother and father, and, you know, and for that matter, your grandparents. If you, if you hate to exercise, it could be in your genes, specifically genes that modulate the dopamine, that, that feel-good chemical in your brain. It appears to play a role in our propensity to embrace or avoid exercise, according to researchers. Uh, you just got to look at any group of people to know that some exercise frequently, others prefer the couch. Raise your hands if you're in the latter. Yep, that's me, <laughs> me too. Well, now it appears that the, uh, the part of the brain that drives rewards and the part of the brain that drives the motor system they are, uh, are interacting, causing some of us uh, to want to run a marathon and leading others to binge watch Game of Thrones. So the translation here is gym rats, they get a rush from working out as dopamine levels soar, while couch potatoes like me, we appear to have a genetic makeup that interferes with the release of dopamine. So thanks a lot, Grandma. Good night, ladies. Good night, sir. Hit it, sweetheart. Oh, <laughs>